Hello, welcome to this introductory video to Business Process Model and Notation, or BPMN for short. What is Business Process Model and Notation? Business Process Model and Notation is a modeling language to model business processes. What are business processes? In the lower part of the slide, you see a rather complex business process consisting of different activities that are either executed by a human or by a machine. Um, consisting of events and gateways um, where a process is split up or where information is received or sent to different process participants. In the following video, I will introduce you to the basic concepts of BPMN. What are the basic BPMN elements? The basic BPMN elements we see on this slide are events, sequent flows and activities. Activity is represented by a rectangle with rounded corners. Um, for example, choose a pizza or eat a pizza. So that's an activity that's part of a process. Activities are connected in the process using sequence flows, and sequence flows are simply small arrows connecting, for example, activities. Each activity needs to be connected to an ingoing and an outgoing sequence flow. Furthermore, there are events. Events um, show that something happened outside or inside the process. For example, a start event, which is a simple circle, starts a process. We have a bold circle, which is an end event. It ends a process. And we have events, which are represented by two circles. Um, these are intermediate events. Um, there is something happening during the process execution. For example, a pizza is ordered or a pizza is received. That could be events in a process. Using the small icons inside the events, we can further annotate um, what the event is about. For example, the black letter symbol represents information being sent and the white uh, letter symbol represents information being received. Finally, there is also the possibility to annotate different shapes um, with additional information, like for example, we expect that the pizza is received after 25 minutes. These are the basic building blocks. Um, we can already model basic processes with these building blocks. The only limitation is that our processes are currently quite linear. Uh, we start with an event, have different activities and end with an end event. Um, usually we need the possibility to model different process paths. And that's what I'll explain next. Um, another element of the BPMN modeling language are gateways. A gateway is represented by this rectangular shape um, and also a little icon representing what this gateway is about. The first gateway we see here is an XOR gateway, so that's an exclusive OR gateway. What does an exclusive OR gateway do? When our process starts with being hungry, um, it arrives at the gateway, and at the gateway there is a question, what would you like to eat? If we decide to eat pizza, the process takes the upper part of the process path. So we choose a pizza, we order it, we receive the pizza, finally we eat the dish, and our hunger is satisfied. If we instead opt for a healthier option like salad, we decide to prepare a salad, we prepare a salad and we eat the salad and the process ends with a satisfied end event. So we see an XOR gateway enables us to either choose one or another process path. You also see on this slide that there are different types of gateways. Um, we have an X or split gateway, where the process is split up in different process paths. And we have a join gateway, where different process paths are joined together again. The first gateway here is a split gateway. Either the upper or the lower process path is taken, and it's joined again together using the X or join gateway at the end. Of course, there are also different types of gateways, not only the XOR um, gateway, but we also have, for example, the parallel 
and the inclusive OR gateway. The parallel gateway or AND gateway is marked with a little plus sign. And the parallel gateway um, executes the process in a way that both process passes are executed in parallel. So if we start this process here, the process arrives at the AND split gateway. So the process is split up in two parallel process passes. We in parallel choose a pizza, order it, and receive it somewhere in the future and prepare a salad. And once both process passes are finished, the process is joined together and we can eat our dish consisting of a pizza and a salad. In contrast to that, there is also the most complex variant of a gateway we'll be seeing in this um, introductory video. That's the inclusive OR gateway. The inclusive OR gateway allows us to either choose one or the other, or both process paths. So we see that the OR gateway, um, in contrast to, to the parallel gateway, it's not always that uh, both passes are chosen or that only one pass is chosen, but um, all variants are possible, either one or the other or both. This is rather complex to understand. Therefore, we usually use the so-called process traces to visualize how a process is executed and especially what is the semantic of a different element. For example, a parallel split or an inclusive or gateway. Um, the process describes um, an abstract representation of a process. So in this example, our process of preparing a dish. Um, and using tokens, that's just a mark with, with a color, for example, or a number, um, we represent a different process instance. So in this upper part of the slide, we see a token, which would represent one instance of the upper process. And using this token, we can now see how our process is executed. It starts at the start event, once we arrive at the split event, the token is split up into two tokens. The first token moves along the upper part of the process, the second a lower process path. So we see in this example, first the activity B is executed, next the activity A is executed. Um, now we also see a second instance. So more instances of a process can run in parallel. The second instance is now represented with this orange token. But let's focus on the blue ones for now. We see the blue tokens move along our process. And what we notice now is that at the parallel join gateway, the token from the lower part of the process waits until the token from the upper part of the process arrives. And once all the tokens from the different process paths are arrived at the join gateway, they are joined together and the process continues with just one token. Activity C is executed and the process ends with the end activity O where our process token is consumed. And you see now the first process has ended, but still the second process is running. For example, it's currently in the state of executing activity C. If we now write down um, the, the names of the different elements where the token moved along, we get the so-called process trace. For example, in the upper part of the process, a possible process trace would be that first the process starts with the start activity I, then the activity A is executed, then activity B is executed, we reach a join gateway, activity Z is executed, and the process ends with the end event O. A different possibility would be that the process again starts with the start event I. It first reaches the parallel split gateway, but now the activity B is executed first, followed by activity A and then activity Z. So besides the process trace I, A, B, C, O, also I, B, A, C, O would be a valid process trace for this process shown here. 
if we look at the lower part with the inclusive OR gateway, there are much more complex or there's more um, process traces possible. The one shown on the slide is simply the process starts with the event I, next the activity A is executed, and then the activity C is executed, and the process ends with the event O. Another possibility would be that the process takes the lower part of the process. So we start with I, activity B is executed, then activity C, and finally activity the event O. But as we here have an inclusive OR gateway, it's also possible that both process paths are executed. So we start with I, and next, first the activity A is executed, after that activity B is executed, then the process is joined together again, activity C is executed, and the process ends with the event O. And as we have seen in the parallel split as well, we could also have a different um, order of activities here in the middle part. It could also be possible that first B is executed and then A is executed, so we get a process trace I, B, A, and then C. So for the lower part, we basically, or we can identify four possible process traces. Once we have seen the different gateway types, we can now have a look at loops. So it's not only possible to have a process that goes um, basically from start to end, but we can have also loops inside a process. What does a loop look like? We see it in the upper part of the picture of the slide. Um, process starts, and then the first thing we see is a join gateway. So the process starts with the hungry event and passes on to the juice dish. So we choose a dish, we select the ingredients, and now we check if all ingredients are available. If this is the case, we can prepare the dish and eat it. If so that's not the case, we need to think about alternatives, and that's exactly what happens here. Not all ingredients are available, we choose the upper process path, and we go back to choosing a dish. So now we have a loop in a process. We can go back in our process until we find a dish where we have all the ingredients available. This is a very com common modeling um, approach and therefore there's also a shortcut available. We don't need to explicitly model the X or join gateway. We can also omit it and model this loop as shown in the lower part of the, of the slide. Here the X or join gateway is omitted and after the sync about alternatives activity here, we go directly using a sequence flow to the choose dish. So this is also a valid BPMN model. And it makes it a little bit more explicit what happens here. We start with choosing a dish, select the ingredients, and afterwards we have the possible loop. Now we have all the elements available that we need to create already rather complex process examples. Well, that's the first example, which stick with our um, example of preparing food, preparing meals. In this example, we decide either to order a pizza or to cook something ourselves. So the process starts with being hungry. First, we arrive at an XOR split gateway. If we decide to order a pizza, we execute the activity of choosing a pizza, we order the pizza, we receive the pizza, and we um, continue along the process to eating the dish and our hunger is satisfied. If we decide at the XOR gateway to cook something ourselves, the XOR gateway is followed immediately by an, X, uh, by an parallel split gateway. So this is also valid. We can um, have gateways after one another. We don't need an activity in between. And the parallel split gateway splits up the process in two parallel paths of preparing a salad and preparing a sandwich, which are joined together again. And then we eat our dish, in this case consisting of a sandwich and salad. 
Obviously, this process is already a little bit more complex, but let's move on to the next. And here we have already a quite complex process model. It's again about cooking. Um, with this process model, we, we try to decide if it's possible to eat pasta with pesto. So once we notice that we are hungry, we start by modeling our process with a split gateway, parallel split gateway. The first thing we need to do, we check if pasta is available or if pesto is available. If both ingredients are available, we take always the upper path in our two um, process passes. Always the yes path in the process and we end up at the parallel joint gateway. So the parallel joint gateway only um, enables the process to move on if all incoming process passes are active. This would be the case. We have all ingredients available. We cook the food and we can eat pasta with pesto. And the process ends with this termination event. What happens if one of the ingredients isn't available? For example, if we don't have pesto available, the process would here take the lower process path move along to this X or join gateway. Note that this is an X or join gateway, not a parallel gateway like up here. And an X or gateway enables the process to move on if one of the incoming process paths is active. So in this case, pesto is not available. The process moves on. At least one ingredient is not available. We order food and we eat the ordered food. And the process ends with a termination event. And that's quite important in this case. We have a termination event because our process can be stuck in one of the process passes. If you think again about the tokens um, that we use to visualize a process instance. In this case, we had pasta available. So the token of pasta available moved along this process path and was waiting up here for a second token to arrive. But the second token from the lower process pass would never arrive because in the lower process pass we moved along. Pesto wasn't available, so the process pass moved along here and to ordering food and eating food. And finally, the process ended. And the difference of a termination event um, represented by this symbol is that it also consumes all the tokens that are active somewhere inside the process model. So in this case, the token that would be alive or active here at the join gateway waiting for the second pa process pass to become active would also be consumed and the whole process would be terminated. That's my introduction of the basic BPM end shapes. Thanks for watching this video and you will now be uh, continuing to the comprehension tests. Thanks.